Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today, I will have the most special guest ever. The funnest, the pinkest, extremely charismatic, very talented circus artist and my close friend, straight from Sweden, Mr. David Eriksson. Formed at Carnaval Stukmistru, which is a rather famous festival organized by Workshops of Culture in Lublin Institution, located in Poland, where we actually met six years ago. Um, did you enjoy your time during this huge, phenomenal international circus event? Well, you see, well, thank, first of all, thank you for having me today. Yes, I did enjoy myself because it was very special for me because. The festival was also the reason why I created that show, you know, because they asked me if I had a show and I, I didn't. So I suggested like we could produce something together and the festival was really open for that. They really, really helped me to, to get things going, you know, and uh, so I'm really thankful for that. Uh, I didn't know about this, actually. It's very yeah, interesting. Well, yeah. Okay, so... Um, let's see a short video of the show you presented yeah. at the festival I mentioned before. Cool. It's really like a short video and it, it doesn't really show how deep this show is. Absolutely. But, no, exactly. Yeah, but um, why do you think the pink on the inside show is so special to you and also so special to others? And before you're going to answer this question, I need to admit that um, I was very touched by your performance. And, um, and when I spoke to some other people in the audience, they, they said they felt the same way. You are unbelievable in that show. You are just opening minds and hearts like, like no one else. And I truly recommend everyone to see this show, honestly. <laughs> so well, now you can answer the question. Well, first of all, thank you for that. Um, as we said before, that was the, uh, the first time I showed, it was the premiere of that show. In, in Lublin at that festival. When I started uh, as a, a, an artist, my aim was to do a solo show. And I was saying like, uh, obviously I cannot create a sh solo show now, I need more experience. So I said, in 10 years, I will do a solo show. And 10 years passed. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, okay, so now I should create a solo show. Mm -hmm. um, uh, yes, I could do with just tricks, but I was like, no, um, I need more, I need more tricks. So in five years, I will do it. So five years passed, it's now 15 years. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, I, I'm not ready. I need, I, need, I need something else, you know, I need something more than tricks. I need, I need a, a concept, a core. And so I, I said, in five years, I will do a solo show. <laughs> and five years passed, and then we are like six years ago. Now, you know, I have to do it. It's getting ridiculous. Yeah. And, <laughs> it's time. And then, you know, and, but, but then I had, I had the tricks. I had the experience. And now I also started to have an idea about not the story, but like a theme. Uh, and the theme was, I want to tell something about myself. You know, mm -hmm. I want to tell uh, people that 
no matter, you know, like, uh, because people have always looked at me like, and, and presumed that I'm a certain way because I'm big, I have tattoos, I have shaved head, yeah. you know, I'm a dangerous guy or I'm a tough guy or whatever. And I wanted to tell them that actually my whole life, I have been very, very much in tune with my feminine side, you know? Yeah. And I wanted to show people that, you know, there's other ways to be a man, you know? You can still be a man, but yeah. I think you become more a man when you are able to show like vulnerability and, you know, like in very symbolic way, you know, the pink on the inside, you know? But I was trying to make a point and trying to change a little bit the trend of to toxic masculinity, you know, that is. Uh, and when I then showed it in Poland, uh, in this festival, which was obviously my audience was, was uh, interested in art and alternative lifestyles, but I, the comments I got from the audience was like, as, like, especially from men, you know, they were like, telling me that I, that, I, that I also opened their eyes, you know, and, and, and showed them in their words, like, that it's possible to be, to, to drop your uh, facade and your manners a little bit. So I created this show on my own, more or less. I, I did not get uh, funding from, from, from the government. I didn't get a budget. I didn't, I took my own money and my, you know, it's, it, it was really low, low budget. It was possible with the help of the festival, with, with some economic support, not much, but like, but most of all, it was possible because they gave me like this platform to show it. And after that, it took off, you know, I, mm -hmm. I performed this show f on five continents after. So yeah, yeah. I'm really proud. <laughs> yeah. Super proud. Yeah, but you know, this is so amazing how real you are in the in the show that I remember when I saw this uh, this performance and after after the show you ask everyone to to come to you and say how they feel or something like this. And and actually everyone really like uh, was thanking you or talking to you about this show and something, and it was so amazing because like it's not typical for for a show you know that you can have this a nice um connection with the artist well i thank you uh this was not this is not something you know i planned i think the reason why it 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 was uh, going into people's like yourself into to your heart was because i managed i don't i, I don't know how but I, i i think and i'm proud of that I managed to do something that that was really authentic, you know, for me. I was uh, I was really giving myself to to the to the to the show, and I actually didn't care uh, once I started that how it would be received because I just knew that I was happy because it was like really something I wanted to tell. And the first period of time when I did the show, I found myself. Uh, when I got the response after the show from the audience, I, I, I was sometimes really just crying, like really crying, weeping, you know, because I felt that there was something, you know, like, I, I mean, like a lot of big artists in the music and whatever, famous people, of course, they reach a lot of audience and they get a lot of like, oh, you touched me, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm working on a really small scale with a very alternative art form. It made me think like, is this my, is this my, uh, you know, is this my, is this it? Is this my life work? Or do I have another, can I create something this ever again? I don't know. Like, I, I don't know. Yeah. But, yeah. But thank you for your words, Lena, because yeah. it, it means so. <laughs> Yeah, you're welcome. And, um, okay. It's time for the second video. Huh? Now I'll have to roll it a bit down. Mm -hmm. it's, it's very far away. <laughs> I never look at my own Instagram because I feel like, 
oh my god i i i was so much funnier before <laughs> yeah but actually for me it was like you know um because I, I remember most of these photos it's like okay it was dubai it was something i remember <laughs> well, you know the my my timeline a little bit uh, yes. yes yes so i was also fitter then <laughs> you know i'm a vain person so yeah. I'm interested to see now what we're going to look at. <laughs> oh, yes, wait, I hope it's okay. We are almost here. So, how long have you been a professional? circus artist and uh, what made you decide on this profession okay um so i've been working professionally for 25 years now uh, i started quite late you know in circus normally not normally but traditionally um uh, it would be something that you grew up with like maybe it, it it's in your in your family it's, it, it goes from generation to generation i come from uh, a working class uh, environment in the north of Sweden. My father was a gardener. My mother was a kindergarten teacher. Um, uh, and I decided really early in, in my teens that I can be whatever, uh, but it has to be something that I want. I wanted to make people laugh, I, you know. Yeah, be on the stage. People, you know, and... And it took me like six or seven years to, to find out, okay, I want to do it like with physical comedy and tricks and circus. And, and in the beginning, I was very much more like aiming to be a circus artist. I was training a lot of acrobatics and juggling. And I was, that's what I was doing for many years. Now I'm older, <laughs> but, and I cannot do the acrobatics anymore. And I'm not as good juggler as I used to be. But I still want to be a, a performer who... who who, who creates moments on stage. But anyway, <laughs> I, I wanted to do something that I wanted yeah. to do. So that's, that's the short answer. Yeah, and um, thank you for it. So we can yeah. enjoy your shows. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> um, okay, time for the final video. Exciting. Yeah. Hey. Oh, I like this one. Okay, so how has the pandemic affected your artistic life? Well, <laughs> or so. maybe I should ask first. Uh, was it tasty? <laughs> that one, you know, uh, during the pandemic, when this, this like hand sanitizers came, yeah. you know, like so many times, you know, I've been, you know, because I do stuff on impulse. So, so many times I've been drinking this, you know, like, uh, and it always tastes like, it tastes like, <laughs> so. but for a course like this, I don't mind because I thought it was a good idea. So I, I don't mind. And it was like some rose flavor or whatever it was like. It was okay, but the pandemic, yeah. uh, when it happened, I had just decided to have, to have a break, you know? Mm -hmm. So when it happened, I was like, oh, this is actually perfect because I was anyway planning to have a break. So like if shows are canceled, I don't care because, you know, I'm going to have two months break and maybe travel the world, you know, yeah. or go for a holiday, whatever. But then I realized that's not going to happen, you know, like, um, because you couldn't travel, wh whatever, you know. So then I was like, okay, okay, okay. This is a good time to learn a different skill or to develop something or to write that thing that you wanted to write, you know, or, and, uh, and I was like, yeah, great. Like, uh. I would do a video like this once a week or take a photo or like make an effort to make a good content, you know, on social media. In the end, I, I, I did not create. I became 
a couch potato. I became, <laughs> uh, you know, I, I was I was just putting things forward, you know, like, oh, I'm I'm, I'm an artist. It's so I'm so it's, it's I don't have you know an outlet for you know making up excuses for not you know, mm-hmm. and I realized it was it was just about me being scared of like going for something because what if I what if I can't do it what if I can't write that thing that I was always dreaming of writing then you know so if I if I don't do it Mm -hmm. I will never know that I couldn't do it and I will not disappoint myself so pandemic for me was actually in that sense you know I, I I feel like like 18, 19 months or whatever it is has has been wasted. Like yeah. and I I used to waste no time. professional circus artist what artistic background and skills should a circus performer have uh, what i think is the most important to need to become a professional circus artist um and i'm not talking about acrobats or you know a performer mm-hmm. in this alternative field that we call circus you need to be you know allowing your creativity and trusting your creativity because everybody is creative and many people say like i'm not creative everybody's creative but some people don't trust you know to to put that into like a thing that you can show so okay and what does it take to be a great juggler or an acrobat well then we talk about uh, technique mm-hmm. and uh, skill the skill is to have good technique and there's science behind that of course like if you want to be a, 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 a great acrobat you have to you have to listen to the science of how physics work with a juggler you have to you know you have to, you have to put in all the hours and you have to think about the posture and you have to think about the rhythms but again uh, the greatest jugglers for me are not the ones who who, 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 who who juggles many objects. The greatest jugglers for me are the ones who who has a relationship with the object. Okay, and um, how to deal with success and failure? I've been uh, reviewed by press for you know my whole career in, in newspapers or television, radio, everything like, and luckily very few times there's been someone saying like uh, he was not very good but i have had also bad reviews Mm -hmm. and i remember those those are the ones i remember all the good ones which is like 99 percent i don't remember in the same way you know it's always like (laughs) so like and if i have a bad show i would beat myself up on it and when I have a good show, I have a very, sh- I, have, I get also affected by that. But that high is, 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 is very fast. When I have a bad show, it can, you know, it can haunt me, you know. Failure in circus can also mean like death. You know I, what I mean? If you fall, uh, you can die. So that, in that sense, I think you should aim for success. But if you're doing, if you like, in, in, in order to, if, you, if you're talking about audience interaction or presenting something uh, which is, has like a, maybe a depth or a theatrical meaning, don't be afraid to be true, you know? What kind of, uh, I mean, we finished this part and uh, it's my last question today. 
what kind of uh, artistic plans do you have for the next uh, few months? Right. So I have a lot of artistic plans. I have a lot of projects here in my home that I want to do. I'm working on, I have ideas for photos that I want to take. I have ideas for like small souvenirs I want to make, which is something I can do at home, you know? I'm writing new material with, with, a, with a friend, my ex-partner, uh, Fufu. We're going to do in 2022, uh, create a new show together. So we are bouncing ideas now, you know? And, and I also, I try, I try to get a little bit back into like, you know, just physical training to, to, to get strong again and, you know, look good and feel good, you know, because that's also important, you know, to have a, a good self-conscious about like who you are and stuff. I don't want to let myself go. I, I, I perform half naked, you know, I want, yeah. you know, yeah, of course. <laughs> I, want to, I want to be attractive, you know, I'm vain. Yeah. So I'm, you know. yeah. yeah. Well, I agree with that. And, um, mm -hmm. All your plans sounds very interesting. Uh, I wish you luck with all your plans. You. Um, yeah. Dear David, thank you so, so much for your time as I know how busy you are. Uh, it, was it, was a, it was a pleasure talking to you and seeing you after so many years. You are my favorite pink creature and you know that. <laughs> and um, guys, if you like the video, you can subscribe the channel and click like. More information about David and his career, you can find on his Instagram and on his website, links below. Thank you so much for watching. Bye. Bye-bye. Are you ready? Ready. Oh, la la. <laughs> <laughs> nice! <laughs>